Welcome back to our psychology series. Today, we're diving into episode two, the biological basis of behavior. Have you ever wondered why you react differently to stress compared to your friend, or why some people are naturally more cheerful while others are prone to anxiety? These differences are deeply rooted in the biological basis of behavior. Today, we'll unravel these mysteries by exploring how our brain, nervous system, neurotransmitters, hormones, and genetics shape who we are. By the end of this episode, you'll have a better understanding of the intricate dance between our biology and behavior. Neuroscience and Behavior First up, let's talk about neuroscience and behavior. Our brain is an incredibly complex organ that controls everything we do. It's divided into several key structures, each with unique functions. The cerebrum is responsible for higher brain functions like thought and action. It's the largest part of the brain divided into two hemispheres and further into four lobes, frontal, parietal, occipital, and temporal. Each lobe has distinct functions that contribute to our behavior and cognitive abilities. The frontal lobe is involved in executive functions such as decision-making, problem-solving, and planning. It's also where our personality and ability to communicate are largely housed. The parietal lobe processes sensory information, helping us understand spatial relationships and navigate our environment. The occipital lobe is primarily responsible for vision, interpreting information from the eyes. Finally, the temporal lobe is essential for processing auditory information and is crucial for memory and emotion. The cerebellum, located at the back of the brain, coordinates voluntary movements like posture, balance, and speech. Despite its small size, it contains more neurons than the rest of the brain combined. This little brain ensures our movements are smooth and precise. The brainstem, situated at the base of the brain, controls basic life functions like breathing, heartbeat, and blood pressure. It's divided into three parts, the midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. The brainstem also acts as a relay station, sending messages between the brain and the rest of the body. The nervous system. Next, let's explore the nervous system, which is divided into the central and peripheral nervous systems. The central nervous system includes the brain and spinal cord, acting as the main control center. The brain is the control center, processing information and sending out commands. The spinal cord, running down the spine, is the main pathway for transmitting information between the brain and the rest of the body. It's also responsible for reflex actions, which are automatic responses to certain stimuli. The peripheral nervous system is like a vast network of nerves connecting the central nervous system to the rest of the body. It has two main parts, the somatic nervous system, which controls voluntary movements, and the autonomic nervous system, which regulates involuntary functions. The somatic nervous system allows us to perform activities like walking, picking up objects, and talking. It consists of sensory nerves that carry information from the senses to the central nervous system, and motor nerves that transmit commands from the central nervous system to the muscles. The autonomic nervous system controls functions like heart rate, digestion, and respiratory rate. It's further divided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. The sympathetic nervous system prepares the body for fight or flight responses during stressful situations by increasing heart rate and blood flow to muscles. The parasympathetic nervous system, on the other hand, promotes rest and digest responses helping the body conserve energy and maintain homeostasis. Neurotransmitters and hormones. Now let's dive into neurotransmitters and hormones. These chemical messengers play crucial roles in influencing our behavior and mood. Neurotransmitters are chemicals that transmit signals across a synapse from one neuron to another. Some key neurotransmitters include dopamine, serotonin, acetylcholine, and GABA. Dopamine is often called the feel-good neurotransmitter because it's involved in reward, motivation, and pleasure. It's crucial for movement and emotional responses. Imbalances in dopamine levels are linked to conditions like Parkinson's disease and schizophrenia. Serotonin helps regulate mood, appetite, and sleep. Low levels of serotonin are associated with depression and anxiety disorders. Antidepressants like SSRIs work by increasing serotonin levels in the brain. Acetylcholine is involved in muscle activation and is critical for learning and memory. GABA, or gamma-aminobutyric acid, 
is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain, reducing neuronal excitability and preventing overstimulation. It's essential for maintaining balance in the brain's activity. Hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol are released by glands and travel through the bloodstream to target organs. Adrenaline, also known as epinephrine, prepares the body for fight or flight responses, increasing heart rate and energy availability. Cortisol, often referred to as the stress hormone, helps the body manage stress by regulating metabolism and immune responses. The balance and interaction of these chemicals significantly impact our behavior, from how we handle stress to how we experience pleasure. Understanding these processes helps us better grasp the biological foundations of our actions and emotions. Genetics and behavior. Finally, let's discuss genetics and behavior. This is where we dive into the nature versus nurture debate. Our genetics can predispose us to certain behaviors and traits, but the environment also plays a critical role. Genes are the basic units of heredity, made up of DNA. They carry instructions for making proteins, which perform various functions in the body. The human genome consists of about 20,000, 25,000 genes, with each individual having a unique combination of these genes. Studies on twins, especially identical twins, help scientists understand the influence of heredity versus environment. Identical twins share the same genetic makeup, making them ideal subjects for studying the impact of genetics on behavior. Fraternal twins, on the other hand, share about 50% of their genes, similar to regular siblings. One famous study is the Minnesota Twin Study, which followed twins raised apart to assess the influence of genetics and environment on various traits. The study found that genetics play a significant role in traits like intelligence, personality, and even the likelihood of developing certain mental health disorders. While genetics provide a blueprint, our experiences and environment can shape and sometimes even override our genetic predispositions. For instance, a person may have a genetic predisposition for high intelligence, but without a stimulating environment and proper education, their potential may not be fully realized. Epigenetics is a fascinating field that studies how environmental factors can affect gene expression without changing the DNA sequence. Factors like diet, stress, and exposure to toxins can influence how genes are turned on or off, affecting our behavior and health. Ultimately, the interplay between genetics and environment shapes who we are. Understanding this complex relationship helps us appreciate the diverse factors that contribute to our behavior. Audience engagement. Now I wanna hear from you. Think about a behavior or trait that you have. Do you think it's more influenced by your genetics or your environment? Share your thoughts in the comments below and let's get a discussion going. Also, take a moment to reflect on your daily routines and habits. How might neurotransmitters and hormones be influencing your mood and actions throughout the day? Pay attention to moments when you feel particularly stressed or happy and consider what might be happening in your brain and body at those times. And here's a fun activity. Try to identify the different functions of your brain's lobes as you go about your day. When you're making a decision, think about your frontal lobe. When you're enjoying a beautiful view, thank your occipital lobe. This can help you connect with the incredible machinery inside your head. In-depth quanta. Let's dive deeper with some frequently asked questions about the biological basis of behavior. If you have more questions, drop them in the comments and we'll cover them in future videos. Question one, how do neurotransmitters and hormones differ in their effects on behavior? Great question. Neurotransmitters are chemicals that transmit signals between neurons in the brain. They act quickly and have short-term effects on behavior. For example, dopamine can make you feel pleasure almost instantly when you receive a reward. Hormones, on the other hand, are released into the bloodstream by glands and can affect the entire body. Their effects are usually slower and longer lasting. For instance, cortisol released during stirring stress can affect your body for hours or even days. Question two, can we change our genetic predispositions through lifestyle choices? Absolutely. While we can't change our DNA, we can influence how our genes are expressed. This is where epigenetics comes in. For example, regular exercise can promote the expression of genes associated with positive mood and cognitive function. 
A healthy diet can also impact gene expression related to metabolism and disease resistance. So our lifestyle choices do play a significant role in shaping our behavior and health. Question three, what happens when there's an imbalance in neurotransmitters or hormones? Imbalances in neurotransmitters or hormones can lead to a variety of mental and physical health issues. For instance, low levels of serotonin are linked to depression, while excessive dopamine activity is associated with schizophrenia. Hormonal imbalances, like too much cortisol, can lead to chronic stress and its associated health problems. It's important to maintain a balance for optimal health and well-being, which is why proper medical treatment and healthy lifestyle choices are crucial. Question four, how do twin studies help us understand the nature versus nurture debate? Twin studies are invaluable for this debate because they allow researchers to separate the effects of genetics and environment. By comparing identical twins who share 100% of their genes with fraternal twins who share about 50% of their genes, scientists can see how much variation in traits is due to genetic factors versus environmental ones. If identical twins are more similar to each other in a certain trait than fraternal twins, it suggests a strong genetic influence. Question five, are there any ethical concerns with genetic research? Yes, genetic research raises several ethical concerns, such as privacy, discrimination, and the potential for genetic modification. It's important to handle genetic information with care to protect individuals' privacy and prevent misuse. There are also concerns about designer babies and the implications of genetic engineering. Ethical guidelines and regulations are crucial to ensure that genetic research benefits society without causing harm. That wraps up our exploration of the biological bases of behavior. From brain structures to genetics, we now have a better understanding of what influences our actions and thoughts. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest episodes. See you next time.